hallelujah, hallelujah, which is the highest praise. Oh, come on, come on this morning. I know God been good to somebody this morning. The deaf angel didn't touch you or your house. I want to just say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for being so awesome, so mighty, so sufficient in all your ways, God. So good morning again. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. So we just, we're so glad to be able to come into your house again, once again, God. To be able to lift up the holy name, his holy name, to lift up the name of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am. Oh, come on, I know he's been good to somebody this morning. He is an awesome, happy Father's Day to God. He is so awesome. He is so awesome in all his ways, not just some of his ways, not just here and there. God is good at all times. God is good when we're not good. God is good when we don't get it right. God is good at any time that we need God. So whenever you can come in and think God is good. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. I'm so grateful, y'all. I just don't like to come up here and just, you know, make it personal. But God has been so good to me. And I appreciate God. I, I, I'm very appreciative. And I just thank God this morning. And I, and, and I do have just a scripture for you all that everyone knows. I think it's Matthew 6 and 9. It said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive us forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but Lord, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. We just thank God this morning for being our awesome Father. Thank him for standing up on our behalf, sitting high, looking low, doing the things that we can't do for ourselves. So we're just so, so appreciative, God, for who you are. This morning, we just come to tell God that he is the best thing ever. That he sent his only begotten son that made our lives better. That when he gave his son the miraculous, oh, the awesome, God just been, been so good. And this morning, I just want to tell you thank you. I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I thank you for everyone in the house, in your house this morning. I thank you, Lord God, that you kept us through the night. We thank you, Father God, that you even love on our children. You're keeping our children there like we can't even keep them, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you just sit high and you look down upon us, God, for being the best father that we can ever have, ask for, the best father that has ever been in our life in allowing your Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, God, and we just want to tell you once again, thank you. So as we pray, everyone just, just get in your minds on how good God is to you. How an uh, awesome father he has been in your life. As he, when he has kept you and moved on your behalf. So Heavenly Father, we look up towards the hills right now. Lord God, for which comes our help. And we know that all of our help, it comes from you, God. It don't come from the north, south, the east, or the west. It comes straight from you, God. So we're just so thankful this morning that you gave us another chance and opportunity, Lord God. You woke us up on this glorious morning to get it right with you, Lord God. You started us on our day, Father God. We didn't do anything, Lord God, on our own. So this morning, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for being almighty. We thank you, Lord God for being sufficient in all your ways. We thank you for loving us, Lord God, when the world throwed us down. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us when the world throwed us away. We thank you, Lord God, for just being God out, oh God out oh, by yourself, Father God. And we tell you, thank you. There is none like you. So right now, Lord God, we want to send up special prayers. Lord God, over our awesome pastor. The awesome man of God, Lord God, that the anointing, Lord God, just, just covers all over him. The Holy Spirit lives inside of him. And we just thank you, Lord God, that he walks, Lord God, with you. 
He talks with you, Lord God. He does everything that you tell him to do, Father God, so he can come and tell us about your goodness, so he can come and tell us, Lord God, that there is none like you, Father God. So right now, we ask you to cover him, Lord God. Keep him, Lord God. Lord, keep loving on him, Lord God, and on his family, Lord God. Move on their behalf, Lord God. So we know, Lord God, that we can look we can search. We can always find, Lord God, we, we search for you, Father God. We thank you for blessing everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God. We bless, ask you to bless them in a mighty way, Lord God, as they go through their day and their week, Lord God. That, you, that Lord God, you do something miraculous in their life, Lord God, what they're looking for you to do. So, Lord God, we always want to ask you for forgiveness of all the sins that were known and unknown to us, Lord God. Word, thought, and deed, present, past, and future. And Lord God, we just want to tell you that we love you. We do ask these and many other blessings. In your son Jesus Christ's name, we do pray, Lord God. The church say amen. 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 Glory be to God. Come on, let's just worship God. Hallelujah. Come on, stand here. Let's just worship God. Hallelujah. For God alone is worthy of our devotion, of our praise, of our worship. He is God. He's our creator. And we are commanded to praise and worship him. Hallelujah. Psalms 96 and 9 says, Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. 29 and 2 say, Give unto the Lord the glory that's due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let's give God glory this morning. Let's give God praise this morning. It's due him, hallelujah. We were created to worship God. We were created to praise him, to give him glory, to give him honor. For God alone is worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. God is worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Come on and praise him, God is worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah, if it wasn't for the goodness the Lord. We wouldn't be here this morning, but because we are here, hallelujah. As the gentleman said, the deaf angel didn't touch us this morning. We are alive and well. We ought to lift our hands and give God glory just for being in his presence. Just for him allowing us to come together and to worship him and to praise his holy name. Hallelujah for God. We give you glory. We give you honor, God. We magnify you, Lord God. God is in your presence, oh Lord, is where we want to be, Lord. Hallelujah, God. God, I'll do anything for you, Lord. Thank you, God, for you being my keeper, my provider. Hallelujah, my shield, my comfort, my peace, my sustainer, my keeper. He's my all in all. Hallelujah. He's the most high God, and we give you glory, God. We give you honor, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. God. It's for your glory, God, hallelujah, that I live, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Father, we thank you. We praise your name, Jesus. Oh, God, it's unto thee, oh, Lord. God, we need you here, God, every hour, God. Lord, we stand in awe of you, Lord, God. Just worshiping you, worshiping you, worshiping you. Come on and worship God. He's our Father. We worship your God. We praise your name, Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you. We honor you, Lord. We bless your name. In your presence, Lord, is where I want to be, God. Into your holies of holies, oh God. Where there's healing, there's deliverance, there's peace, there's joy. Hallelujah. It's nothing like being in your presence, oh God. To feel your love, oh God. Mm. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. How many will say for 
God, is for your glory, God. I will do anything, Jesus, just to see you, Lord, to behold your glory, God. Hallelujah. All that we go through down here on this earth is just a dressing room. I praise and worship. If you get tired of worshiping him, then you don't make reservations for heaven. Because that's what we're going to be doing 24-7, praising him and worshiping God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In your presence, Lord, that's where we want to be, God. Hallelujah, God, it's for your glory, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give God glory. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Got to be where you are. Say, I want to be where you are. Got to be, got to be where you are. To be where you are. I want to be where you are. I got to be there.
we love you, Lord God. There is none like you, Lord God. We love you more than anything, Lord. We love you more than houses or land, Lord God. We love you, Lord God, with an everlasting love, God. We adore you. We bless your name, Jesus. There is none like you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We worship and adore you, Lord. We praise your holy name, God. For you are worthy, God. God, you're worthy, God. That's why, Lord God, we worship you, God. That's why we say, Lord, we need thee, oh God. Every hour, every minute, every second, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God. We can do nothing of ourselves, oh God. It's only through your power, Lord God. Only through your spirit, only by your power, your might, God. Father, we thank you that we move and have our being, oh God. Lord, we just love you and adore you, God. We lift our hands and worship you. For you are worthy, God. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the God. You are the, you are the, you are the God. You are the Lord. Come on, if you know God is worthy, say you are. Your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 We magnify you. Hallelujah. Oh God, in the viewing audience, Lord, bless their house, oh God, bless them, God, give them wisdom and knowledge, oh God, cause them to be men of honor, God, and valor, oh God, that they'll stand up, oh God, and be the heads of the house, Lord God, that they, they will lead under the unction of the Holy Ghost, oh God, that they will be prayer warriors in their home, oh God, Father God, that they will cry out unto you, Lord God, that they will bow their knees and worship you, Lord God, that they will teach their family how to worship, how to praise you, how to live a godly life, Lord, that they will be examples, oh God, of the priest, Father, that they will be the prophet, priest and king in their home, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you have blessed them this day, God. Bless them, oh God, to be hearers of your word, God. As we hear your word today, God, help us, oh God, to hide your word in our hearts, oh God. Father, that we will stand up, oh God, and live for you, Lord God, in these dark and evil days, evil days, Lord. Lead us, keep us, protect us, shield us, guide us, oh God, and cover us, oh God. Insulate us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we thank and praise you, oh God. We give you glory, God. We give you honor, Lord, and we bless your name, Jesus. We praise you right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the house say hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. So let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's just so good to be here today and want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there. Uh, whether you have children uh, that are your blood or whether you have mentored, we want to say to you happy, happy Father's Day. God is such an awesome God and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You know, I just thank God. We want to pray for those that are traveling. We have individuals that are traveling today and to spend time with their, with their fathers, their loved ones. And uh, we just want God to protect them and bless them so that they will go to and fro safely. Today, as we look at Father's Day, Fathers have a tremendous responsibility. If you're going to be a dad today, if you're going to be a real man, you, you have a tremendous responsibility. So much so that sometimes you have to be almost just like Superman. And so today I want to pin this message and leave in your mind just like Superman. I want to recommend, or should I say, I want to commend the fathers. Those of you who are trying to stay strong, those of you who are trying to be, continue to be good Christians and live according to the word of God, live according to the mandate, uh, be a leader, uh, be a force, be a manager, all the things, all the hats that different fathers have to wear. And I'm telling you, your responsibility is great because at the end of the day, the responsibility and the duties really fall back on you. If you look in the Bible, you see what God gave Adam all the commandments as far as what to do, and Eve was his helpmate. And so I understand that sometimes there might be confusion as to who's wearing the pants in the house, but at the end of the day, uh, fathers, your wives and the children want you to be the leaders. I know they might not act like it sometime, but they want you to be the leader. And so God has equipped us. But sometimes it seems like we have to be like Superman. Somebody says Superman. And so you understand that Superman is a is a fiction and but you can learn a lot of things from uh, from his story and from his movies. That is right. Fiction, nonfiction is true. Fiction is not. So, so you have to understand that it's a beautiful story and they've come out with different movies and they've upgraded them, updated them. But the message is pretty much the same. Is that all right? Everybody, I don't care how young the kids are and how old we are, everybody wants to be like Superman. And so I need you to understand that Jesus gave you the strength to be a Superman. I want to tell the fathers today, don't quit. Don't give up because the Christ on the inside of you has given you the strength to be a Superman. Superman was a comic, cartoon, TV character. Having great strength, he had the ability to fly. He was a man with exceptional, remarkable, that is, physical and mental abilities, along with extraordinary Amazing, unusual, unexpected powers. I remember the saying, and you know it too, he was faster than a locomotive, more powerful than a speeding bullet, able to leap tall buildings in a single bounce. They said, look up in the air. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Superman. 
And so when Superman was little, make a long story short, he was just an alien that landed on earth. And he grew into be an icon of goodness to the whole world. And so he has inspired the world with his high moral values. Superman had high moral values. Remember, he was always after the bad guy. He was always out there trying to right the wrong. He was out there saving uh, people from the enemy and from destruction. And so we see that he has inspired the world with high moral values and has taught us many things about justice and life. He has persuaded, we're talking about Superman, has, has persuaded countless of people to continue working hard and giving everything they can despite the odds they face in life. And so we find that Superman is the hero of heroes. He's the incorruptible idea by which we as the human race should strive to be. And so today, I want to commend and applaud and celebrate every father that is trying to do right, live right, be a Christian, be a Christian husband and father, because for the most part, it's not easy. And I understand why some men walk away, some fathers walk away from their families. I understand why some fathers abort the mission. I understand why they get frustrated and quit. I understand why they start using drugs and substance abuse. I understand why they run and do a whole lot of things because there's a lot of pressure. And sometimes in today's society, if you are going to make it in this life, you've got to be like Superman. be successful in today's society, you must be a person of more character. To make it in today's society, you've got to be a person of more strength, and you've got to have the ability to fly mentally and spiritually above situations you are obligated to be in. You, 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 we have so many responsibilities from day to day. We have so much pressure on us from day to day. And I just need, I need everybody to, every day, when you think about praying, make sure you pray for the fathers. We, we are quick to say that we got these low down, no good men, such and such and such. But I need you to be praying for those of us who are trying to live right. Those of us who are trying to walk right. Those of us who are trying to hold on. I know you think you know what it is to be a man, mothers, and, and ladies and women, but you don't know the half the pressure it is and half the pressure that fathers go through just to stand and to live and move and do what's right for, the, for another day. If it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for the keeping power of Jesus Christ on the inside of us, most of us, if not all of us, would have run. Took tail and quit. So we've got to understand that our responsibility is not easy. It's not easy to be a breadwinner. It's not easy to be a visionary and then turn around and be a manager and then turn around and be a counselor and then turn around and be a coach and be a mentor and turn around and, and, and have to counsel and turn around and have to, to fix problems and issues and turn around and try to be intentional and try to be proactive and try to fix things that are unfixable and try to make everybody happy. Sometimes it seems like everybody is happy uh, but us. It seems like everybody has to be tended to. The question is, at the end of the day, who speaks to the fathers? Who, who, who comforts the fathers? Who talks to the fathers? Who Fills up the father. Who tells the father, I thank the Lord for you? How many mothers, how many ladies tell the fathers, I thank the Lord for you? I appreciate you being in my life. 
You a wonderful man. I love you. I just thank you how you sacrifice. I love you because you're always taking care of me. I love you because you, 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 it's not that you don't have any faults, but I love you because you got staying power. I love you because you love the Lord. How many, when was the last time you told? I know you, th- you think it's just supposed that it just happens like that. It's just, just the way it is, but it's not the way it is. And so we must understand that fathers must be like Superman. A, God, a God-fearing man with exceptional, remarkable physical and mental abilities. I say exceptional. See, sometimes just knowing a little bit ain't gonna, won't, be, won't fix it. <laughs> you got to be exceptional. Sometimes to, to, to get the money and be paid the money that you need to be paid for the same job that somebody else knows how to do, you have to be exceptional and remarkable. And then we've got to be in shape physically and mentally, and we got to have uh, we have to have great abilities because we're competing. We're always competing as men, as fathers. We're always competing. We live in a competitive world, and what we should not have to do is come home and compete. I can't get no help. We shouldn't have to come home and compete with kids and pe- compete with our children and compete with our, with our wives and other family members. We, we should be able to come home and rest our heads and, and, and be comforted and be affirmed. And so as we go on in this, we understand that your lifestyle, we have to be God-fearing and along with extraordinary, amazing, unusual, and ex- and, 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 and unexpected God-given powers. Our lifestyle as fathers and men, our lifestyles and our vocations, our spiritual walk has to be of one who inspires your family first, then your neighbors. The world in which you live with your high moral values, which, which while, while, while at the same time teaching them many things about justice and life. See, we've got to love justice, and we've got to love life, and we've got to do mercy, and we've got to live humbly before our God. We as men, as head of household, as fathers, there is such a high demand on what we do. But I need you to understand that, that, that we can do it. We can do all things through Christ as he works and strengthens us from the inside. And I need you to understand, just like Superman, you, may, you must be able to persuade your families and countless of people to work hard and continue to work hard and give everything that they have uh, and, and everything they can despite the odds they face in this life. And so the question is, what makes Superman super? What makes him superior? What makes him top notch? And how are we going to be like Superman? Well, I need to tell you a little bit more of the story. You have to understand that Superman's power, his strength, his speed, his heat vision, everything comes from Earth's yellow sun. So that's how people, that's how That's how Superman is able to be so strong, to be powerful, to be superior, to have heat vision, and to operate at the speed of a bullet and jump over tall buildings and fly. It's because everything came from Earth's yellow sun, which was more nourishing for his Kryptonian cells than the red sun of Krypton. Also, Krypton's gravity was much stronger than Earth, so much, so much stronger that the, Kryptonian, the Kryptonians had to evolve to develop anti-gravity organs. And so these organs made it possible for Kryptonians to move around on Krypton without being crushed by the intense gravity. And I know some people not, not, not enjoying this, but I got some guys, I know they just, they, they, they track it with me. They know this stuff. They got the comic books at home. They got the movies at home. So, so, so ladies, y'all just bear with us. This is our time. This is Father's Day. And so we understand that. But, but on Earth, when, when Superman was on Earth, when he, when he interacted with Earth, it says, but on Earth, which had both weaker gravity and a kinder atmosphere, they could basically resist gravity so strongly they defied it. So it, it was... It was the fact that when they got here to earth, the gravity and the sun's energy 
help them to be strong, help them to be uh, supernatural. And so, therefore, the overall effect on Superman's body was the same. It defied gravity altogether because when he came to earth, see, see he was building up. As a, Krypton, as a Kryptonian, he was building up. He had to build up because up there on Krypton, on the other planet, the gravity was strong. And so they had to build up themselves on the inside. And they had to build up their stamina. And they had to develop a way to stand and to survive the strong power of gravity on Krypton. So when they got on Earth, the gravity was what's lighter, weaker. And the sun gave them strength and power. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. Uh, 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 and so, so when Superman prepared to unleash the full potential of his alien body, causing the snow and the stones around him to start to float, his essential, he's, he's essentially altering or altered the gravity field around his body to enable himself to fly. Like Superman. Somebody said like Superman. Like Superman, our power, our strength, our insight, our wisdom, and our dominion comes from God the Son. Our power, our strength, our wisdom comes from not the S-U-N like Superman, but it comes from capital S-O-N. Our power comes from the almighty Son of God whose name is Jesus. And I need you to understand as fathers, the more we submit to the Son of God, the more his supernatural Holy Spirit rays will nourish and cultivate our spiritual DNA. And so that we are constantly overcoming everything that comes against us. You have to understand that God has put in us what we need, not only to survive, but to conquer. He put us, he put in us to walk in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He put in us to fly high. And fly above situations, issues, and problems. I must take you to Ephesians chapter 1. Paul writes to the church of Ephesus in chapter 1 in the Amplified, verse 17 through 19. Paul says, I'm always praying for you guys. I'm always, always praying for you. What is he saying? He said, I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets. I, I, I told you that, I, I, I tried to tell you that we get, we, we, we're supermen because we get everything we need from God through Jesus Christ. And so Paul is confirming this. He says that he might grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secret in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. We don't have to worry about what we don't know. We just need to know Jesus Christ and him crucified and him resurrected and understand that he has given us insight. He has given us spiritual wisdom. He has given us revelation. He has, he has caused us to see and walk into mysteries and secrets. And so that makes us spiritually supermen because God is living on the inside of us and revealing himself to us day by day. And it doesn't matter what kind of problems you go through. It doesn't matter what kind of issues you face. It doesn't matter who leaves you and walk out on you and who go a wall and who stop serving God and who stop doing the things that be of God. God has equipped you to be a superman because he's going to give you everything you need. Can I keep going? The Bible says, over in Ephesians, he says, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so you're going to be able to see things that other folk can't see. You're going to be able to discern some things. Folk going to be walking around in darkness. You got a lot of people, they're afraid right now. They're talking about inflation. They're afraid of the economy. They're afraid because gas is going up. Groceries going up. But if you stay with the Lord, young man, if you stay with the Lord, God will give you supernatural abilities. He will help you to thrive even in an economy that we are now living in. 
You got to learn how to give God the glory and the praise right where you are. If the gas is too high, God will give you more money to buy some. If the groceries get too high, he'll give you more money or he'll have somebody to give you some. Whatever you need, you got to understand that God's going to always supply it. You just stand up and be like Superman. Don't you know the Holy Ghost on the inside of you helps to make you who you are? You need to stop looking around and stop listening to all the negativity. You know, I tell, I tell First Lady, I say, I hear all this stuff. Every time the news come on, they're talking about inflation and high gas prices and the economy and stuff. And I'm looking around at the center man. He's just enjoying himself. He's just going on by the business. He's still partying. He's still driving. He's still dressing. He's still doing all the devilish stuff he want to do. Everybody coming out the closet. They got this day and the other day. And folks just having a good time. And you somewhere in a corner talking about it's hot, inflation up, gas high, food high. I don't know what I'm going to do. What kind of God do you serve? My God and your God is the same God, and we serve a God that owns everything. He's Father and Creator of all. He's the one that gives us the knowledge and the wisdom and the in. Oh my God, the revelation. So let me tell you something. I don't need all of that stuff. I just need revelation knowledge from God. I need to understand the mysteries, and I need to understand the secrets of God. Because God will help me to move around the pitfalls. God will show me how to make more money than, than I've ever made right here in these times. God will show me how to trust him. God will show me when to make a move and when not to make a move. God will cause all sufficiency and all grace and all blessings and all favor to come into your life. You just need to, oh my God, you just need to believe. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. He, he, go, he goes on to say, he said, and how rich is his glory. Inheritance in the saints, his set apart one. So you got to understand that we are rich in Jesus. We are rich in the, we, we have an inheritance because we're set apart and we belong to God Almighty. We are his children and God is not an infidel. He's going to take care of what's his. You just don't run off and leave and make sure you stay with the Lord. He goes on to say, and so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us. Superman had great powers. He was made of the stuff because of where he came from, because of his DNA. Fathers, I want to tell you today, we have great power. Because of our spiritual DNA, made in the image of God. Adam messed up. We're in Adam, but God sent Jesus to correct all of that in us. And although we are stuck in these Adamic bodies, we have the Spirit of Christ, the eternal one, living on the inside of us, who's very much alive. And he causes us to be immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness because his power is in us. We're not great of ourselves. We're great because of his power that lives on the inside of us. Can I go on? He says, so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us. Man, that's a qualification. Who believe? <laughs> Got to believe. As demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. We understand. And the weaker, just like Superman, and the weaker gravity. The severity, the harshness, and the difficulties of this life. It's like Superman divide, def defied gravity. We can defy and we will this, these difficulties, these severities and harshness of life will be defied and resisted by the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe. That's why you don't have to worry about the devil. 
You got to worry about what the devil is doing. You know, I know a lot of folk die, folk being killed, and they walking in the churches, shooting up people, and so on and so forth. You still don't have to worry about that. You just have to be vigilant. You have to believe that God is going to protect you. You have to believe that God is more powerful than the enemy. And you have to believe that no weapon formed against you should prosper. I just told you it's, it's immeasurable according to what we believe. And so we must understand that his power is great in us. And when it talks about his immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness, that means that he does exceeding abundantly above all that we can think or ask or imagine. God's got power that we ain't seen yet. They're like the devil got crazy stuff and low down stuff that he, that he does and we hadn't seen yet. God has immeasurable power. Unlimited. So when the devil ups his tactics and his arsenal and all of that stuff and his weapons, God got something waiting on him. But you got to stay in the Lord. You got to make sure you stay with the Lord. The, the, don't run. What, the, the Bible says that, that, that the unrighteous man is filled with no man pursuing. What you running from? If you living right, you ain't got to run. If you're doing what you're supposed to, when God comes in the room, you welcome his presence, not run and hide and say, well, hold on, Lord. <laughs> Lest I keep you too long, I'm getting ready to close this out. Superman could fly because he defies gravity. But I need you to understand something. According to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27 through 31, I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible. Superman can fly because he, def he, he defies gravity, and, and we spread our spiritual wings and soar like eagles because we wait upon the Lord. Yes. And when we say wait upon the Lord, that means a, a waiter in a restaurant serves. So we ain't sitting down. We serving the Lord. And that's how you're able to overcome a lot of things. Because you're not sitting around worrying and in everybody else's business and keeping up with negative stuff. You're serving the Lord. How do you serve the Lord? By serving people. By helping people. See, the fact that we're in the situation that we're in, in this country and in this world, that means that a greater, larger service is needed. So that means your giftings, your abilities, your talents, and the things that you do is needed greatly. And guess what happened? A lot of people need it now, and it's needed greatly, and it's needed widespread. So you get a chance to do a whole lot of things and help a whole lot of people. And when you help, you reap what you sow. And so as you begin to help somebody else and fellowship and connect with them, and you pour into their life, God continues to bless your socks off, even in the midst of trying times. So the Bible says, I'm reminded of the word from Isaiah 40, verse 27 through 31. He says, why would you ever complain, O Jacob, or whine, Israel? Why y'all complain? Whining and complaining, saying, God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happened to me. Some folk living like this right now. Christian, pole mouthed, belly aching, talking about. At, see, when, see, when you start talking about the problem, whether then God solving the problem, you giving the enemy a food that he shouldn't be eating. And you give him a, you give him a way in. You, you give him a, a foothold. And the Bible says don't give him no foothold. Don't give him no way in. Don't give him no crack. And so it goes, it goes on to say, God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happened to me. And you know that's a lie straight from the pit. And so the Bible goes on and says, don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. We serve a God that's here for ye all eternity. He's here right now with me, and he's going to be with me to carry me from this earthly body to my spiritual body, he's going to be with me to carry me into heaven, and we're going to praise and worship him. He says he's creator of all of you. He 
He's creator of all of you. Can see or imagine. He don't get tired out. He doesn't pause to catch his breath. And he knows everything inside and out. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Just to know this, I can rest in the Lord. Just to know this, I don't have to look over my shoulder. Just to know this, I don't have to worry about who's after me. He goes on to say, he energizes those who get tired. So if you get tired, you just need a taste of the Lord. If you get tired, you need to come on in to praise and worship and lift your hands and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. And then he goes on, he, go, he goes on to say, the, the writer goes on to say, uh, 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 give fresh, he, he, energize, me, he energizes those who, give, who get tired, and he gives fresh strength to dropouts. So if you done dropped out, get on back up, because the Lord will give you strength. He'll give you power. He'll give you everything you need. He says, for, every, for, for even young people, tired and dropouts, for those that's got all this energy, says young folk in their prime stumble and fall. They stumble and fall. But I got some good news for you. It says, but those who wait upon God, the men who wait upon God, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be like a super spirit. You're going to be like a spiritual superman. Says, those that wait upon the Lord, guess what happens? They get fresh strength. And I want to talk to somebody today who's been in a bad situation and in a bad place, and you call on the Lord, and he gave you some fresh strength. You call on the Lord, and he helped you. You call on the Lord, and now you're walking in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He said they spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind, just like Superman. I don't want you to worry today because of your responsibilities, men of God, fathers. I want you to embrace the fact that there is a powerful being by the name, the Holy Spirit, the person that lives on the inside of you. And all you have to do is make sure that he's engaged and you're engaged, that you don't quench the spirit, the Holy Ghost. Don't set him aside. Don't disobey him. Don't ignore him. Yield to his promptings. Yield to his voice. And you will see yourself sowing and overcoming and thriving and leaping and hearing things that other folks can't hear and seeing things that other people can't see. And you'll be unlimited in your abilities and you will be unmeasurable and you will be powerful in your daily walk. I hope this message has been a blessing to you. May God keep you. This is our prayer. God bless you.